In this video, we discuss double integrals over general regions, example 3. Find the volume of the solid in the first octant bounded by the coordinate planes, the plane x equals 2y, and the cylinder y squared plus z squared equals 4. Now, first of all, there are a few things that we need to understand. Whenever it says first octant, that means that x, y, and z are all greater than or equal to zero. This will be really important um, in all problems that say first octant because oftentimes the zero will give you the lower bound of your region. Now the coordinate planes um, are the planes x equals zero, y equals zero, and z equals zero. And what we want to do is we want to graph our region and figure out our bounds for our integral before we even try to set up our integral. So I'm going to graph the 3D version and then the projection of that region onto the XY plane, so our two-dimensional version as well. So I have the, the line X equals 2Y. So when um, y is 1, x equals 2, and when y is 2, x equals 4. So I'm going to plot those points on my xy um, grid and connect them to get the line um, x equals 2y. Okay, <clears throat> I'm going to graph the same line in the xy plane of my three-dimensional um, grid. So I've labeled um, out through 4 on the x-axis and out through 2 on the y-axis. And remember, when um, y equals 1, x equals 2. And when y equals 2, x equals 4. So I'm just going to draw a little grid here for myself to find the point 4, 2. And there's my line x equals 2y in the xy plane. Um, on my 3D grid. So next I want to figure out the other bound and that other bound is going to come from the cylinder y squared plus z squared equals 4. Now hopefully you remember from the first unit that this is going to be a cylinder that is parallel to the x-axis because x is my missing variable and it's going to have a circular um, shape with a radius of 2. Now because I'm limited to the first octant, that's only going to be a quarter of my cylinder. So I have the quarter in the positive octant with radius 2 parallel to the x-axis. And that's going to give me my, um, my region. And you can see what I've shaded in is the region between the edge of the cylinder, that's actually the line y equals 2, and the, um, the line x equals 2y that we had already graphed. So the line y equals 2 in the xy plane, we also could have found this by just letting z equal 0, and then we would have had y squared equals 4, so we would have known that y equals 2 was the edge of the cylinder in the xy plane. So we have the line y equals 2 and um, we'll shade in the region that uh, we are bounded by. So now what we want to do is we want to find a lower bound and an upper bound and a left bound and a right bound. And we know that x is going to start at 0 because we're coming in from the left, and it goes to x equals 2y. So if we entered that region from the left and exited the region on the right, x would go in at 0 and come out at the line y, x equals 2y. y goes from 0, which is my smallest y value, to y equals 2, which is my largest y value. So remember with your constant bounds, you just want to go from smallest to largest point in the region. So now that we have our bounds, we can set up our integral. 
we know that x goes from 0 to 2y, and we know that y goes from 0 to 2. So we have a double integral, 0 to 2, and then 0 to 2y, of whatever our function is, f of xy, dx, dy. Now to find our f of xy, we're going to take the y squared plus z squared equals 4 and solve for z to find f of xy. So z squared equals 4 minus y squared. Take the square root of both sides to solve for z. z equals plus or minus the square root of 4 minus y squared. And remember, we're bounded um, in the first octant, so we're going to use the positive only since we're restricted to the first octant. So my z is going to be the positive square root of 4 minus y squared. So we have volume is the double integral from 0 to 2 and 0 to 2y of square root of 4 minus y squared dx dy. And we always work our way from the inside outward. So we're going to focus on that inner integral, 0 to 2y, of the square root of 4 minus y squared dx. Since it's with respect to x, the square root of 4 minus y squared is just one big constant. And so I'm going to have that constant times x. So x square root of 4 minus y squared evaluated from x equals 0 to x equals 2y. That's equal to 2y square root of 4 minus y squared minus 0, because my lower bound when I plug it in gives me a 0. So now I take that result and plug it into my outer integral, and I get the volume equals the integral from 0 to 2 of 2y square root of 4 minus y squared dy. So now I just have to use a u substitution to solve this. Okay, so our u substitution is going to be u equals 4 minus y squared, so the entire expression that's under the radical, du equals negative 2y dy. So solving for the um, 2y dy, which is what I want to replace, I get negative du equals 2y dy. Now I'm going to change my bounds so that I can just do my u integration and not have to go back and substitute uh, an expression of y in there. So when y equals 0, my lower bound, u equals 4 minus 0 squared, which gives me a 4. When y equals 2, my upper bound, u equals 4 minus 2 squared, which gives me 0. So my bounds are now going to be 4 to 0. So my um, volume is going to be the integral from 4 to 0 of square root of u times negative du. So remember my u was the 4 minus y squared. That's where I got the square root of u negative du because I had negative du replaces the 2y dy and I just integrate so negative two-thirds u to the three halves evaluated from u equals 4 to u equals 0 so negative two-thirds times 0 to the three halves minus 4 to the three halves and that gives me 16 thirds it's a volume, so I set it to be cubic units. And so when you're changing your bounds, you always want your lower y bound to translate to your lower u bound. So when y equals 0, u equals 4, so that becomes the lower u bound. When y equals 2, u equals 0, so that becomes the upper u bound. Now just to review, to set up our bounds, 
back here on the first slide, we graphed the region and we got the, um, the line x equals 2y was given to us and the line y equals 2 we can find by letting z equals 0 in the equation y squared plus z squared equals 4. So then you get y squared equals 4 and that's where we got y equals 2. Now we could have set this up going from lower bound to upper bound first and then used constants for x. That would work just as well. Um, we would just have to make sure that in that case our order of integration was reversed. And we'll talk more about that in the next video.